Okay. Mission New York, New York. This afternoon, Michael will be working out of humorous project number four, Keep Them Laughing. Michael is sharing a chapter out of his mission log book today. He has faced many challenging projects in his life, but few as daunting as his current quest. In order to ensure the mission completion, he needs to employ the ultimate power, the Amen Woman. <laughs> Let us see how it worked out in New York, New York. <clears throat> it began innocently enough. I worked for a company based in Los Angeles. I was there every six months. Two ballparks. They started having their meetings in Chicago. Two more ballparks. An idea started to germinate. And I traveled solo to Pittsburgh and to Atlanta. And it became a mission to go to every major league ballpark in America. The distances grew further, required multiple nights. I needed a crew, so I enlisted the Almond Woman to be my co-pilot. And the mission was on. Arizona, St. Louis, Seattle, we were racking them up. And then, Houston, we have a problem. Bone on bone arthritis. We're looking down the barrel of surgery that's going to require six months of recuperation without being able to put her foot on the floor. The crew and mission were in peril. And then came the miracle of stem cell replacement therapy. Squirted a few stem cells in there like the tin man with her oil can. Her knee bent. Her foot was fixed. And the game was back on. New York, New York. But even being that close, I did not understand the significance of the golden aura of health that this miracle consumed until we stepped out of the taxi cab in New York City, <laughs> Times Square. Okay, you know, you Toastmasters are amazing. You know, I just committed a cardinal sin in public speaking. And that is not telling you the truth. <laughs> and you picked right up on it. <laughs> so now I will tell you the truth about this picture. It was taken exactly six weeks before she had the stem cell surgery replacement therapy. She was looking pretty good. <laughs> thing. So, first stop, Yankee Stadium. The house that Ruth built. The house that Ruth remodeled. The house that Ruth rebuilt at $200 million state-of-the-art marble facade ballpark with gold lettering across the top. Absolutely beautiful. There's only one problem with Yankee Stadium. It's in the Bronx. This is a lovely picture right outside of Yankee Stadium. Notice the junk shops, the consignment shops. But luckily for us, there were little <coughs> hole-in-the-wall bars all the way down this street. And it was good they were on that street because you didn't venture more than two blocks away from that street or your life would be in peril. What you'll notice here is that the almond woman has decided to wear outer garments. Now this is not to cover a false sense of modesty by any means. It's because I call this slide drinking with the enemy. And underneath our outer clothing is our raised gear, cleverly disguised. <laughs> Although I was informed that the only thing they hate worse than raised fans are cross-dressers. The ballpark was beautiful. $200 million, as I said before, with the largest jumbotron screen in America. Awesome sight to behold on a beautiful June night. Yankees playing the Blue Jays. And I want to tell you a fact about baseball. Is each time there's a game, uh, the baseball team will give up about two dozen balls. And most of them bounce into the stands. You know, and are collected by fans. However, I have never, 25 ball games a year, never had a foul ball land anywhere near me. So it's a miracle to catch one. But here is something even more miraculous. You look at this photo, 
and you see a photo of the fans behind the first base dugout and included in the fans is the almond woman. Well, this is not really correct. This is a photo of the jumbotron in center field. And on the jumbotron is a picture of Michael <laughs> taking a picture of the jumbotron <laughs> at the same moment that the center field camera is taking a picture of Michael and the almond woman. Now, I'll bet you a paycheck you have never seen a picture like this before. Well, the thing about visiting two ballparks in one city is that they never play on the same weekend. So we got done with Yankee Stadium, and now, as crew commander, I had to keep my co-pilot occupied for the next two days. Fortunately for me, Almond's favorite guitar player in the whole world was playing at the world-famous Beacon Theater the next night. We, she was so excited to get there, we got there four hours early. We cruised around the building, and I saw this 18-wheeler. Now, I had been to five Joe Bonamassa concerts. For some reason, Almond just cannot get enough of him. And every time I've gone to a venue, this 18-wheeler has been parked right outside the venue. Now, I'm figuring it's loaded with Marshall amps, keyboards, the guitar locker with the 16 vintage Les Pauls and Fender Strats. But on this afternoon, when we walked around the back, we found the truth about this 18-wheeler. It's Joe Bonamassa's kitchen, <laughs> complete with cook. What does Joe like to eat? Chicken. Lots and lots of chicken. Now, we don't have been in New York City 48 hours, but already the word of the stem cell miracle was sweeping across my Manhattan. At that point, even old Joe had to run down to the lobby to witness this miracle of stem cell replacement therapy. One more day to go. The Mets game was until Monday. So I'm here to tell you, if you're stranded with your wife in New York City on a Sunday afternoon, Taking her to a Broadway show is a good idea. Standing out in the rain for two hours to get a cheap bug ticket from TKTS is not a very good idea. I lasted about two minutes, snuck inside, and got uh, tickets from the hotel concierge. Now, I can't say that I like or dislike Broadway plays because I can't remember ever staying awake through one before. But Jersey Boys on a Sunday afternoon was like a sound clip from the soundtrack of my life. I enjoyed every minute of it. It was a wonderful experience. And I would recommend it to anyone. Monday came, sun was shining, and City Field, one of the most beautiful ballparks, in my opinion, surpassing Yankee Stadium. <coughs> Even the Almond Woman says, my God, this looks more like a bank lobby than a ballpark <laughs> as we entered the foyer. Another beautiful night, another great jumbotron, and City Field had amenities, fried artichokes, London broil subs, and a little miniature Brooklyn Bridge right out there in the outfield. It was truly a wonderful place to visit a ball game. The one ironic thing I saw was a fellow walking around with a navy blue New York Yankees cap. <laughs> hey, aren't you at the wrong ballpark? No, not at all. I was born and raised in New York City. I am a diehard Yankees fan through and through. But I can't stand Yankee Stadium and I hate going to the Bronx. <laughs> So when I come to watch a live game, I come out here to Flushing Meadow and go to City Field. And so the sun set on the New York, New York part of the mission. <clears throat> we continued to travel on and hit 25 of the 30 major league ballparks and looking to wrap up this big adventure next summer. And if you're interested, I'll give you another log entry at a future date. Thanks.